Good evening, my monsters. Tonight we have a good one for you. It's called, I went on a walk in the park with my dog. Something stalked us. Written by Supreme Bliss 101 from the No Sleep Reddit. And if you have any stories of your own that you would like narrated on the channel, please submit them to the above email. Please enjoy. I was walking in the park with my dog one day. It was a nice Saturday afternoon, and it had that nice fresh air smell. I thought it would be nice to take a little breather away from the stresses of my house. Plus, I hadn't walked my dog in weeks. She was a lab or a retriever mix, so she needed somewhere to express her almost unsurpassable amount of energy. We were taking one of those mile-long trails that have a dead end, because they were never finished, I guess. It was a big open area that had bodies of water on either side of the trail. To the left there was a little ditch of water that followed the trail and to the right there was a big lake that had overhanging trees that covered the sun. But there were still specific spots where the sun broke through. I hoped on finding a nice little dead end tree line where I could relax with Cory, my dog, and then turn around and head back after an hour. As I walked along the trail. I noticed that she seemed to get restless, sniffing around and poking her head up in certain directions. I had to keep yanking the leash to keep her from walking into the lake, as I didn't want her getting wet. After about five minutes, we had crossed the line of sight to where you could see the lake, and Cory finally came to my side in a normal trot. However, I noticed she still had a fix on something in the tree line. Her head wasn't darting around like before but instead trained on the tree line to our right. I called her to my attention. Hey girl. What's wrong, do you see something? I nodded my head to the forest. But it was no use. She was now focused on me, wagging her tail and panting for affection. I kneeled down to pet her and feed her a treat. After I stood up, I let her use the restroom and we went back to walking. This time she was normal. I inspected the woods to see if I could find a squirrel or something that could call my dog's attention. There were a few birds and squirrels, nothing particularly interesting, so I just shrugged it off as her hunting instincts or something. After a bit of walking, I noticed her head poke up once more. This time she was growling. I looked to the forest, quickly shushing her. In the split second that she went silent, I heard a loud thump which was quickly followed by Cory, full-on barking. It took me a second to process before I finally started tugging on the leash that was already starting to slip out of my hands. At this point, I was yelling at her to heal. No dice. Something was clearly wrong. Just to let you know that this wasn't any typical barking, this dog was delirious. You could see the spit flying from its mouth. She was showing her teeth and practically standing on her two hind legs. I couldn't hold on anymore. The leash slipped from my hands and I fell forwards on my hands and knees. I could hear Cory's cries in the distances as she drew further and further away. I didn't know what to do for a moment. I couldn't just go follow her in the woods as my body wasn't fit to navigate through those thick trees and branches quite like a dog could. I decided to sit down and wait till she came back. At least she knew I was here and that I would scold her for running off when she returned. I pondered about what kind of thing could rile her up like that. She wasn't the type of dog to run off, even when antagonized. As I began to recall the previous events of the situation, I heard a rustling in the woods. I quickly stood up and began whistling to call Cory to my side. The rustling stopped as soon as it noticed I was aware of it. I couldn't see where it was coming from. I whistled again and this time I heard every dog owner's nightmare. I could make out Cory's yelps of pain out in the distance, each one more violent than the last one. I ran down off the trail into the forests. I didn't care if I got slapped by some branches, or if I tripped and broke something. Cory was all I could think about. Tears were rolling down my cheeks as I was audibly crying out in horror at the fact that my dog was in pain. I knew Cory ever since she was a puppy. She was the most innocent and nice dog I ever had. I could hear the rustling from before now following behind me. 
Corey's yells grew louder and louder as I got closer. I finally got to an open area where I could tell that Corey was just behind a tree. Here, girl. I'm right here. I said through tears. Corey finally appeared from the tree. She wasn't visibly hurt or anything, but I didn't care at the moment. Come here, girl. Are you okay? I was relieved to see she was alright. I knelt down on one knee, motioning with my hands to come so I could pet her. She didn't approach me. I tried to get up and walk towards her, but she just stepped back a few steps. That's when I finally got a good look at her. The leash that she was wearing before was gone, which wasn't entirely weird, but her collar was missing too, and her eyes. Something about them just felt off, like she was observing me. The rustling behind me started up again, and finally something popped out. It was Corey, but this time she had the leash and collar on. She was panting excitedly and wagging her tail. But how could this be? I was certain that I was just looking at her. I then turned to inspect the other Corey who was now in a defensive stance in response to Corey's sudden appearance. They both looked exactly alike. I then decided in my mind that the real Corey was the one with the leash, so I headed over to her and picked up the leash. She was calm this time, only panting with her tongue out because she was just running through the woods. I didn't know what to do next. This was clearly not just some coincidence. The fake Corey now sat on the ground and started panting with her tongue out in a similar fashion to Corey's. It was like she was trying to copy her. Corey was now letting out a soft growl in between pants in which I was now quick to shush her. The fake Cory began to do the same, however it didn't stop. It kept growling, louder and louder. Cory started up growling again, this time ignoring my demands and snaring her teeth. The fake Cory now began to make these odd moans between growls. It's not something I could describe well at all, but it sounded like it knew it was being threatened. Then both Corys stood up on all fours in unison. The creature's howls got more and more distorted, and it began dripping this black type of saliva out of its mouth. I finally decided it was time to leave, as this creature was otherworldly. I began pulling the leash in an effort to get Cory to back up with me. This time she obeyed, and began to head away from whatever the hell this thing was. What was once a Cory look-alike now began morphing into some kind of beast. Its mouth opened wide, too wide for a dog, and its eyes started to turn white with a red outline on the edge of the eyeballs. Its fur began to move in a strange manner. There was no breeze, but it was moving as if it was being blown up. By this point, it was obvious that this thing wasn't normal. I turned around and began running, letting Corey's leash guide me, shouting at her to go faster. I could hear the footsteps of this beast pound on the forest floor behind me. The thumps on the ground sounded heavy, almost like I was being chased by a horse. I could hear the tree limbs snapping behind me. I began to scream and please. I pleaded for safety and to finally be out of here. We finally crashed out of the woods and out onto the trail. By this point, I had let go of the leash to let Cory run freely as it was becoming a hindrance to both of our speeds. I heard the crashing and snapping of the trees that were now on our left side as we were heading in the direction out. We eventually got to the lakeside and began running on the shore because it was the quickest way out. After whatever was following us got to the end of the tree line, I expected it to burst out onto the trail behind us. I turned my head to see but I only saw that the beast had come to a complete halt just behind the tree line. I paced slower, and so did Corey. We both were looking at it now. I don't know what stopped it. I guessed it just realized that it might not be able to catch up, or maybe it ran out of energy, which was unlikely. The beast was morphing again. This time it morphed back into the fake Corey. It stared at us for a bit, then turned around and headed back into the forest. I sighed in relief as I caught my breath. My tears had dried on the side of my cheeks, 
I would have cried, but I had no more liquid. I kneeled down and hugged Corey tightly, who was now back to panting. We took the trail back to the regular section of the park and got to my car. The whole drive back home, I decided to never question what I saw. It wasn't going to get me anywhere. It seemed that Corey, in her oblivious dog nature, forgot about everything. It has been almost two years since that incident. Corey is in fine health, and we still go on walks just at a different park, and we don't take any more back trails. All I have to say on the matter is that you should just get a really tight leash for your dog. I'm serious.